Right, Man United versus West Ham. They will be looking to improve on their disappointing fifth place finish last season. Um, do you think United's new signings are going to make the difference after the early summer turmoil? I mean, new signings, Dominic Janssen, amazing signing. Melvin Mallard, obviously like with them last season, but signed on a permanent. Uh, Elizabeth Turland from Brighton, absolutely incredible. Celine Bizet from Spurs, who's been reunited, reunited. Best with her bestie. Best friends forever, best friends forever. Uh, with Grace Clinton. Um, United looks set on signing a third first team goalkeeper, but nothing kind of materialised. I was expecting some big news on that, but absolutely nothing came about. Mm. Um, do we think those signings are going to be enough to kind of boy the weight that has kind of surrounded the club a little bit this summer. Um, there's obviously been a lot of kind of like negative press with the club in terms of kind of the training ground, in terms of obviously Mary Earps leaving as well, another big player. In terms kind of, of every time Jim Ratcliffe mentions the women's team. Yeah, yeah that, that doesn't help either. I spoke to Mark Skinner at the media day and understandably he was very positive about um, the new season. Um, I think he wants to be. I think he's excited to get going. And I do think you have to remember, they did win an FA Cup last season. Yeah, it wasn't um, it wasn't a, a washout. No, they did. There was some ups and downs. Um, they did make history with the club. Those fans now, he said, they've given them a memory for life, you know, winning their first FA Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did say the weight of expectation on them was super high after <clears throat> the season previously. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think, you know, that was a nice way for them to end the season because the FA Cup was near the end of the season. I know they they didn't end the season quite how they would have liked um, with the Chelsea loss. But, you know, there are some positives. I think there's some, the signings will definitely bring some positivity, some freshness. um, And I think they'll be, they'll almost see it as, you know, new captain. I think they'll feel like it's a bit of a a new, a chance for them to refresh everything. And I'd say that's probably the way they're going to approach it. Mm -hmm. Um. Like you said, I feel like there'll be less pressure on them this season compared to last season. And I think they'll want to kind of focus. I think they'll want to keep positive with all the kind of noise around the the club. They'll want to keep positive about what they're doing on the pitch. Um, And I think, you know, opening at Old Trafford and, and it'll be a game they'll want to win and score some goals in, that will help. Yeah, for sure. I think... um. I don't know, I've got mixed views about how the season's going to go. Like, there's not that kind of level of expectation, I think, around Man United this year, which actually could be a bit of a weight off, like taking the pressure off. But I think the issue with that is that if they have another season, which feels like a little bit flat in terms of the WSL results, um, obviously they're at the Champions League, which will probably help things a little bit in terms of the match schedule and stuff like that. But I I, I do feel like another flat season, finishing fifth, even finishing sixth, is going to kind of like... It's, it's going to start to look like a deterioration in the club. like the, and, and I think it was difficult because the club has such a massive trajectory from coming into the WSL. But I don't I don't know. They are good signings. There's a lot of experience there. There's a, you know, Mallard had a great season. Elizabeth Turland had an incredible season with Brighton. And Celine Bizet was like one of the players that I picked out as being like one of Spurs' best players last year. So something he said to me was how well the players were settling and gelling. And he was like, look, a manager's always going to say that, but he's like, I do genuinely mean it. They went out to Marbella for a preseason camp and they didn't kind of have any fixtures because he wanted to, they wanted to really put them through some tough mm-hmm. training, some grueling training. That kind of stuff bonds a team as well. And I think that's probably one of the benefits of these preseason mini tours or whatever it is they do, whether it's playing fixtures or training elsewhere. It kind of allows the teams to suffer together and, and I guess gel a bit more and kind of galvanize them a little bit. So they've got a couple of. You know, they'd look at those opening fixtures of West Ham and Everton and they'd say, we want to get six points on the board before we meet Chelsea. Yeah. I just, I'm a bit like, come on, guys. Like, that's how I feel. That's my energy right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Maya Letizia at the helm this year. She's been named uh, United's captain for this season following uh, Katie Zellum's departure. Um, she's featured in every single competitive fixture since joining the club two years ago. She is 22 years old, mm. okay? Like, half your age. How okay, do Sorry, th- whoa. <laughs> Hang on a fucking second, <laughs> Chloe. You're not that much younger than me. Can I just clarify? She's not half my age. <laughs> Jesus. I thought you were going to let that one fly. I've got a birthday coming soon, and it's not 44, let me tell you. All right, well... Happy 40th. Fuck um, off. It's going to be 36. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like that feel, that to me feels like a bit of a fresh start. Like, That's what I mean. Myla Tizier, young, talented player, 
like incredible kind of like I think there's already like a subtle leadership quality about her has a strong head on her shoulders not one to kind of rise too much like I feel like this could be the calm that's needed to kind of weather the storm of like what's been happening over summer um, and to put a fresh lens on things and just be like okay we've got a new captain we've got a new yeah. season you know we're going to go again and yeah so that's why I kind of that's why I'm like they're excited about it yeah for sure yeah I do feel like watch this space this could be like a new like subtle era of United happening. I still, I'm not sure if they'll get into that top three, but you know, I'd, I'd say they'll want that fourth spot and be pushing for third. They won't want to finish as far off the top spot as they did last season. I think it was like 20 points off or something. Well, I don't think anyone was expecting the top three after we clearly stated our WSL predictions that a fact Man United we know in advance wouldn't wouldn't be there. Uh, big deadline day news: uh, Nikita Paris leaving United after signing for Brighton. I mean, how much do we think Brighton's attack is going to be affected by another another attacker? That's such an exciting front line oh, isn't it just Brighton. isn't it just um Bruno Villamala on loan from Barcelona as well yeah Michelle Adjumang like go to OG. such an exciting young front line and then you add in the experience of Keats who was banging in the goals last season you know I, I was a bit nervous when Talent went I was nervous yeah but now not not so much I was yeah I, I agree I mean I'm still a bit like on the fence about if they gel quickly wow if that squad gels quickly, they've got some serious talent in there. Yeah. Um, it's just often difficult with a new manager and new players. But I get another team where I'm like, enough of the rinse and repeat. Like, just give a manager time, give them time to find their feet and build the relationships. And if there's 10th by January, carry on. Like, mm. so long as they stay up, I think that's the main thing. Um, you know, they're playing Everton, Brighton at the weekend. And I think... They'll look at that as a as a, a good a game to open with. You know, I've spoken a little bit about, I was pleased to see how Everton did in the transfer window. So I'm excited to see, there's Leicester, Liverpool, there's Brighton, Everton. I'm excited to see how those teams get on because I feel like it gives you more of a, an idea of where they are. Yeah, for When sure. they play a team that you're like, I don't actually really know who's going to win this game. All day. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how Brighton, I'm excited to see how Dario Vida such. Like, I mean, he's, an, he's a new coach. I'm excited to see what he brings to the team, what kind of style they play. Uh, and yeah, I think a nice blend of youth and experience in that Brighton squad, some WSL experience as well, which would be key, like Keats, Fran, being able to pull these players together, Maria Torres dot here, players like that to be like, you know, I know we've got new players in, we've, this is a new league for some of you, but like, it's going to be good. I think it's that, they've kind of been quite lucky, I think with the run of like games that they've got at the outset. I think... Um, like what you want to be doing is kind of getting those early points on the board. Like if you're like finishing up like your next month or so with like six to nine points, I think like that puts you in such a good space. Like especially when like, I mean, looking at the table from last season, like 19 points. Like if you're racking up already like half your points tally within the first like month and a half. It's amazing like, what the right run of fixtures can do for your day. season. All day. You know, and you know, you keep key players fit. It's just like, it's not always about losing to the top teams, actually. It's about consistency. It's about the fixtures coming in at the right time. It's about like hanging on to the right players when you need the most. And just little things like that. If they don't go your way, the wheels can come off. So yeah, it's a, it, it does matter. Every game does matter. This is a thing. And it's a, it's a short enough league. There's not a lot of teams. Um, and, you know, you, you don't want to be looking back at the beginning and going, if only we'd put that game to bed and not I mean look at the championship last season with five teams in the running for so long wild you know and, and just a draw here and there mm. just pulls you out of that race or drops you closer to relegation so yeah all of these games matter I mean they've been putting an absolute shift this summer signing 10 players in total most of which that you mentioned their age um, I mean we asked on Instagram for some of our most outrageous predictions for this season Daniel said Brighton to win the league and Shalvi said, Brighton will do better than Man United. These are very bold claims. Wow. Very bold claims. I, I mean, think saying Brighton will still have the same manager by the end of the season would be another bold claim. And I'm hoping they do. <laughs> Brighton to win the league. Just don't sounds... sack the manager. Like, just please. I just, it's the one thing. Give, I'd like to have a season with no manager sackings. That might be too much to ask. Oh, that would have been a good one for the old uh, what the fuck moment. Yeah. No manager gets sacked. Yeah. Do we think that's possible? Uh, no. I, I don't. I don't think any manager is safe. I, I, I just don't. 